this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you can kind of, this is kind of my crash course in, in fingerstyle guitar. So you're interested in, in fingerstyle guitar, but you may be starting from the very, very, very beginning of, of guitar study. And so we're going to kind of talk a little bit about, a uh, little bit of all the stuff that, that, you know, things to practice and things that you should probably know. One of which would be all the parts of the guitar. So the big part of the guitar is the body, you have the neck, you've got the head, uh, these parts are called the tuners. You got the uh, white piece at the very beginning near the head's called the nut. Uh, then you have the silver lines, which are called the frets, and each one you can number kind of first fret, second, third, fourth, fifth. And then you'll have dots sometimes to kind of help you too. Three, five, seven, nine normally is what you'll have. And then the double dot on the guitar is kind of a special uh, guy, and we'll talk about why later um, but in this video. But uh, that's the 12th fret, it's kind of your double dot. Then you've got, normally you've got a piece down here called the bridge, a little white piece called the saddle, um, some pins that go in on the bridge called the end pins. Um, sometimes you'll have a little plastic piece here that kind of guards against the pick gouging out the wood called the pick guard. Um, instead of that, actually, I have this cool little inlay thing around my sound hole because Jack Ball Knight made this guitar and he's cool. And that's called a Rosetta. Um, and the hole where the sound comes out, it comes out is called the sound hole. Um, then you have these things on the sides called the sides, this thing on the back called the back. Got a piece back here called the heel. Um, sometimes it'll have a little piece in it for the strap called the button. And at the very end, you've got something called the peg at the very end. Um, and then we have the strings. And the strings normally get numbered from the thinnest one to the thickest one. So this is kind of first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth string. And those can be very important to kind of know the names of the notes. And I have a little memory device to help you remember them. Uh, every beginning guitarist desires another encore, which is cool. So we have an E string, B string, G string, D string, A string, and E string. And what can be kind of cool is to kind of just play those and call them out. Kind of an E and a B and a G and a D and an A and an E. And you may want to try that, speaking of fingerstyle, you could do that with your thumb. Might feel the easiest way to do that. Kind of the D and the A and the E, E, B, G, D, A, E. Or you could use your fingers, actually. You could use an index finger as kind of a stroke. And this is a little weird if you're interested in, in fingerstyle. Normally, if you relax your hand, it's almost a zombie hand thing. Um, that's the most relaxed position for your hand. Sometimes you want to try and simulate that when you kind of go to the strings. And when you try and make uh, finger strokes, actually, with your right hand, you may want to kind of try and think of all the joints kind of going in one, di one, one direction, actually. This is kind of weird. It's kind of a physics thing. Um, but you've got three joints in your finger, so if you think of the stroke kind of coming from the knuckle joint, you've got more force and more control over it normally. So lots of different variations on this experiment. See what, what works for you. But um, but traditional classical uh, finger style, you'd be trying to do something called free stroke. At least it's a good place to start. Where you'd be trying to make it kind of a knuckle joint idea. Um, so you're trying to get like all your, your joints to kind of go in one direction. So you may want to kind of just try some air strokes. <laughs> this is kind of cool from zombie hand. Kind of, oh, relax. Uh, uh, walking dead moment. Um, so you may want to kind of play around with, with, with that. And the weird thing too is you have a very strong tendon connection between your ring finger and your pinky. And you can almost kind of think about it as like the pinky thinks about the stroke, the ring finger kind of makes the stroke for you normally on the string. So you want to try those two together. So you could try air strokes and you could practice those anywhere just to kind of see like what it feels like to move your fingers. Um, or you could try them on the strings. And a good setup to start with is kind of taking the thumb and if you go to the low E string with the thumb just to kind of start and line up your index finger and his job is to play the G string. Middle finger's job is to play the B string. Ring finger's job is to play the high E string. And you could start with some really cool little uh, broken chord ideas. Actually, we're not even worried about chords yet. But kind of going thumb, index, middle, ring might be kind of a cool place to start with your right hand. Normally that would kind of feel pretty good. You could even kind of set up your fingers on the strings and kind of try different bass notes with the thumb. And normally that, that can be kind of a cool thing to practice too. Um, or you can kind of take each individual finger, for instance, and kind of just try each finger on each individual string to kind of play around with some right hand ideas. But it kind of working that thumb index middle ring kind of an idea is, is kind of a cool place to start. If In traditional classical, normally, Spanish names for the fingers, so your thumb sometimes gets called P, index gets called I, middle gets called M, that which makes sense. Um, but then the ring finger gets called A, and the pinky gets called Chica. So it's almost like uh, Spanish abbreviations, because Spanish guitar players wrote these methods in the 1700s. So your thumb is P for pulgar, I for indeso, M for medio, 
A for Angular and C for Chica. But you really want to kind of think about the A and the C kind of working together. So that might be kind of a cool place to start. Now this is something called a right hand arpeggio, or a, a broken chord pattern. And there's lots of different variations on this actually. Thumb, index, middle, ring is a good place to start. Thumb, middle, index, ring could be cool. Thumb, ring, middle, index could be cool. So just anything you can think of as far as combinations of those four fingers can be a cool thing to try with the right hand just to get used to moving around. And you can always switch your bass note if you're bored. Get, get your thumb to kind of move between the strings, kind of taking one pattern and kind of really getting used to that. And you want to see how relaxed you can be with that and how little you actually have to try. The, the string is always smaller than you are. So you want to try and think about it. Really relaxed kind of motions, you know, with the right hand. So you might want to experiment with that. And we're going to talk about a couple chords and a couple patterns to, to kind of work. Talking about fingerstyle guitar, though, doesn't mean that, that you can't do a lot with the left hand. And with your left hand, your index finger is number one, and then number two, number three, number four. And you can kind of work little two finger combinations actually to kind of start out with. I think these, this can be kind of cool taking like the first finger on the first fret on the high E and playing that note, and then going to second finger on the same string as kind of a one and two, and you can kind of work just some dexterity ideas just kind of going back and forth with one and two. Or you could do like first finger to third finger, that's kind of an idea. And you may want to kind of play around with where the thumb is, especially when you get three and four. Sometimes moving the thumb a little bit lower on the neck or raising the neck to kind of get a better angle with the left hand, you can kind of play around with that. Um, so you could go one and three or one and four, and you could work little two finger combinations. Um, and kind of one and three is a, is a cool one, two and four, three and four. And then something else I like to do is taking those ideas and then moving them around. So you could do like the one and two, and if you took that idea and kind of moved it to every string, then that might be kind of a cool way to kind of do it. Now we're kind of doing more melody ideas. So you, could, you may want to switch uh, fingerings, actually. Kind of index middle works really good for, for kind of two finger ideas. And you may want to kind of play around with that, or kind of doing index ring would be another option to get used to that. Or you could try middle to ring, actually, as kind of an alternation. So that might be kind of a cool idea to kind of move that around. I call that climbing when you do like one on every string. It's kind of strange, you want to terminology. Um, or you could do some hammer-ons where you kind of play the first finger and let the second finger kind of carry the sound or the next finger of the combination. You can even do that with the climbing idea and kind of put those together. Or you could even kind of go up the string and this could be kind of cool doing first fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret. Kind of working something called the chromatic scale here, we'll talk about it later. Um, so you may want to kind of play around with that too. Or you can find other ways to move around or mix that up with different combinations. The, the main thing here is like find something to do with the left hand, you know, that you don't have to think about what notes you're doing. You can just kind of focus on just dexterity. Um, something else that can be cool too is, is working, actually I've got a whole crazy video on this kind of where you play the low E and kind of the, the high E together. It's kind of an octave idea. And you may want to kind of play around even with different frets of the neck. So it's almost like you've got an E bass, you can work one string melody kind of stuff. So I'm using my thumb and kind of my fingers to kind of alternate. I'm kind of playing around with the major scale idea right now. Kind of, kind of the open E to the second fret on the high E, to fourth, to fifth, to seventh, to ninth, to eleventh, to twelfth. Get you a major scale. So kind of a do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And even kind of working just that. One string can be kind of cool. So uh, kind of playing around with, with it a little bit, but just kind of open-ended idea there too. You could take scales or mix it up with other modes or other frets, or kind of follow your ear. I kind of have some some videos called "Talking with the Guitar" where we talk about one-string melody kind of stuff. But the idea is to take your left hand and kind of kind of exercise with it. Climbing or going up the string, and that can be cool putting those together, or hammer ons or pull offs, or you kind of play the new front, or you can even work slide ideas, or you can play around with different strings. So, kind of open ended 
idea there too, but I think that might be kind of a cool thing to play around with as far as left hand exercises go with finger style guitar. We're going to talk about a couple chords and a couple patterns to, to kind of work. And we're going to start out with kind of a G major pattern actually. I'm kind of digging on Stand By Me today. Um, so we're going to start on, on kind of start off with, with a really easy finger style arrangement of, of Stand By Me and we start on a G major chord. Normally you do this first finger on the A second, second finger on the G or the low E string on the third fret, third finger on the high E string on the third fret. If you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord and it sounds really happy. Now you may also want to think about putting the third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third, kind of working that for your G major. And then from the G we'll be going to an E minor chord. Normally you do this first finger on the A second, second finger on the D second fret. If you strum all those together, that sounds an E minor chord and it sounds really sad. Um, now you may also want to add in the third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. That's kind of a cool option for E minors, E minor seven. And then from the E minor, we're going to go into a C major chord. And we play C major. First finger goes to the B on the first fret, second finger on the D second fret, third finger on the A string third fret. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, that sounds a C major chord and it sounds really happy. Um, now you may also want to think about lifting off the first finger, making that a C major seven. Or you could add in the pinky on the B string third and kind of make a C major nine. Or you could even kind of play C major nine a slightly different way where you do first finger on the D second, second finger on the A third, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third, and the C major. And then from the C we'll be working to a D major chord, a D major. First finger goes to the G on the second fret, second finger on the high E second fret, and third finger on the B string third fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, that sounds a D major chord and it sounds really, really happy. Now while you're on Ds in general, you may want to think about lifting off the second finger and making that a D sus two. Or you can take the pinky and kind of add it on the high E third for a D sus and kind of say some things around the D major chord. And what can be kind of cool is to kind of take an arpeggio and kind of work it through the chord pattern for a song. Um, so one of my favorite uh, right hand patterns is kind of a thumb, middle, index, ring, and then middle, index, middle, which can be kind of a cool way to kind of work it. Slightly syncopated, not so boring. So, so we got kind of thumb, middle, index, ring, and then middle, index, middle. So the strings I'm playing, I'm using the low E string for my bass note on the G chord, and then going to the B, G, and then the high E, and then coming back B, G, B. So you got bass, B, G, E, B, G, B, it's kind of the strings. But I'm trying to kind of use it, that division of labor uh, freestyle idea, kind of that low E bass, and then middle, index, ring, middle, index, middle, or P, M, I, A, And so if we did that on each of the chords through the song, we'd start out on the G, and then another G, and then we have an E minor, and another E minor, kind of with a low E bass, and then for the C, you'd have the A for your bass, and on the D, you'd have the D for the bass, and then you'd be back to the G. So that might be kind of a cool thing to kind of practice, especially if you're just if kind of interested in starting out with, with finger style, having something pretty easy to kind of work through sounds really good, you know, kind of working little arpeggios or broken chords kind of through the song. So you want to kind of play around with that idea. There's lots of other ways to use your fingers though, so you want to experiment with other patterns too. Or something, this is kind of a cool thing too, is you can do almost kind of a bass fingers together and then a slap idea if you want to sound a little bit funkier. So it might be kind of cool because it gives you a moment to kind of set up your fingers on the strings. So I'm kind of doing that twice on each chord. Kind of bass chord, bass chord, bass chord, bass chord, E minor, E minor, C. G, G, G. 
So with fingerstyle, actually, the main thing is to kind of know where your bass note is if you're working the chords. So another way to kind of work Stand By Me, actually, is instead of it really being in the key of G, it's really in the key of A major. And so you could start out on an A major chord. I'm kind of going through this to kind of uh, throw all the major chords of the guitar at you and kind of show you how you can move some stuff around, too. So we could start on an A major, where you do first finger on the D second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the B string third. If you strum all those together, that sounds an A major chord and sounds really happy. Now while you're on A's in general, you could lift off three and make that an A suspended second. Or you could add in the pinky on the B string third for kind of an A sus and kind of say some things around A chords. Um, and your bass note for that would be on the A string if you wanted to kind of play around with that with the arpeggio. Or if you wanted to, you could practice some bar chords. And this can be a little bit more difficult if you're just starting out, just starting out. But just to go over what, what that could look like, is you could do A major a different way, where you do first finger as a fifth fret bar. And I'm kind of keeping the first finger really, really flat. Sometimes actually a, an exercise in the air too for this that, that can help is to kind of try and keep the index finger flat and kind of take the second finger and kind of run them up against the first finger. This guy used to call these finger puppets because it reminds me of that thing you do. But this can be kind of a cool exercise to try like with each of the fingers to kind of go against the other one. Because that's what you're doing in the bars. You're holding down a shape, but the first finger's trying to stay really flat. And sometimes bringing your thumb around, oh wow, yeah, that, that's an interesting shape. Um, but bringing the thumb around to the other side, like near the three and four, sometimes that'll help uh, kind of hold them down too. And head angle, actually raising the head and kind of watching where your thumb is in, in the chord can kind of help with that too. But another way to play A major is to do it as a fifth fret bar. Second finger on the G, sixth fret, third finger on the A7, pinky on the D7. And that could be a cool way to kind of work your A major. And what, what really is going on is kind of an E major shape moving around. But, uh, we'll talk more about that later too. Uh, but then from the A, we could work that to an F sharp minor chord. Now, this is another bar chord, but, but since we're talking about bars and practicing bars, you can do first finger across the entire second fret. Third finger on the A, fourth fret, pinky on the D string, fourth fret. It's kind of an F sharp minor chord. And like I said, you may want to play around with where your thumb is, swapping out lighter strings, and this is definitely easier on electric. So I'm an F sharp minor, is kind of, kind of the next chord. And then we go to our D major chord, and then we go to an E major chord, where you do first finger on the G, first fret, second finger on the A, second fret, and third finger on the D string, second fret. And if you show all those together, that sounds like an E major chord, and it sounds really, really happy. Um, now, if you're working this as a finger style, the main thing is to keep track of where the basses are. And on your A major bar, you'd have the low E for your bass. On the regular A, you'd have the A string for your bass. And then for the F sharp minor, you'd have the low E for the bass, kind of your thumb note there. And then for the D, you'd have the D string for your bass. On the E, you'd have the low E for the bass. So you could kind of take that same arpeggio, actually, and kind of work it through that, that chord progression that way. Kind of A, A. Something else that can be very good to, to know too is something called the chromatic scale. And actually, this kind of relates to how you could take the major shape and the minor shape that we're using and actually and play every single major and minor chord in our demand by using the notes on the E string. And the way notes work in music is you kind of use the alphabet A, B, C, D, F, G, and then you start over on A. A, B, C, D, F, G, A, B, C, D, F, G, A, B, C, D, F, G. And one thing you could do is kind of take a string and play every single note on it. And that, that's called a chromatic scale. Chroma means color and scale means ladder. So this is kind of like the colored ladder is if you play every single note on the E string. Um, now, there's some other notes that kind of get thrown in there, though, called sharps and flats. And actually, what a sharp is, is where you go at one fret higher. So if you've got an open E, and then you go to first fret, and that's an F, because E's are magic and they go straight to F. Then we could slide it over to second fret, and we could call it F sharp. And then we go to third fret for a G. But then if you go up to fourth fret, that's called G sharp. And if you go up to fifth fret, that's an A. Kind of that A we were using as a bar, actually. Um, and then from there, we go to sixth fret for an A sharp, seventh fret for a B, eighth fret for a C, ninth fret for a C sharp. Oh, and that was the other weird part is B's magic, we go to C. 
So B, E, eighth frets at C, ninth frets C sharp, tenth frets D, and then eleventh frets D sharp, and then twelfth frets back to E. So you kind of got E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, and E is kind of the names of, of those notes on the E string. Now there's something else in music called a flat, which is where you go on the other way. So if e, E's on the 12th fret and you go back to 11th fret, we could call that E flat. <laughs> so then 10th fret would be a D, 9th fret would be a D flat, 8th fret's a C, 7th fret's a B, 6th fret's a B flat, 5th fret's an A, 4th fret's an A flat, 3rd fret's a G, 2nd fret's a G flat, and then F and then we're magically back to E. So it is a little weird because every sharp has a flat name too, but all together you got E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, and then E, E flat, D, D flat, C, B, B flat, A, A flat, G, G flat, F, E, if you want to just play those notes and call them out so you can find any note anywhere on the guitar actually because that order never changes. Um, or you could even take the chord shape, like the A major chord shape, and then move it around by chromatic scale. So whatever note you're playing on the E string, with that bar shape from fifth, that's what chord it is. So if you're looking at your favorite song and it says A flat major, you could take that shape and slide it down one fret to an A flat note on the low E, and that's an A flat major. Or you could slide it down one more, and that's a G, or you could slide it down again, and that's a G flat, or you could slide it down again, the first fret, and that's an F note. So whatever note you're playing on the low E, that's what chord it is. Now that F sharp minor shape actually works the same way. So, so what we're doing it. This is a second fret bar with the F minor shape. But whatever note you're playing on the low E string is that's what, what minor chord it is. So that's F sharp minor. But if we went to third fret, it'd be a G minor. And fourth fret would be a G sharp minor. And then A would be an A minor. And then sixth fret would be an A sharp minor. So you may want to kind of take that shape, and you can even do that with the arpeggio idea. That has a finger style idea, which could be very cool. Where you can take the major shape and move it around. So that might be something else to practice too. But I think the main thing, especially if, if you're just starting out with, with, with finger style, is just to kind of get used to those patterns. So you may want to kind of take the right hand, even on the open strings, and kind of work just that one pattern and kind of play around with, with kind of the moving bases. Now in Stand By Me, though, there is kind of this cool little bass line. To, you could kind of play around with this too, where you could play open E, fourth fret on the low E, and then the fifth fret on the low E twice, and then we kind of do that again, kind of go four, five, five, and then we go five, four to two on the low E string, and then open E, and then second fret on the low E, and then second fret on the low E, open E, and then open D, and then open to four to two on the D string back to 0, 4, 5 on the low E string. So you can kind of follow that bass line. It's a really famous bass line. Kind of like E, G sharp, A, E, G sharp, A, A, G sharp, F sharp, E, F sharp, F sharp, E, D, D, F sharp, E, A, G sharp, A, E, G sharp, A. Or you might want to kind of do a little bit of the bass and then take the fingers to kind of throw in uh, so, some, some accents on the chord. So maybe kind of a cool way to kind of work it through the tune too. So kind of going bass, bass, bass all together is kind of, kind of what I'm, I'm kind of thinking is kind of following that bass line. Kind of work that, kind of work that bass, bass fingers idea we were doing. Or you could work it at the arpeggio, which would be cool too. Especially if you're just starting out with the bars, but I thought that would be kind of cool. And by practicing Stand By Me in both of those keys, you're actually playing every major chord that you'll ever need on the guitar. 
But that's the basics of how, or the kind of my crash course on fingerstyle guitar, kind of working uh, some chords and some fingerstyle patterns. So I hope that helps you out. So good luck.